it is the beginning. And I'm talking about this Warriors side. And we spoke about this last week against North Queensland, the best win in the last couple of years. Well, you wouldn't categorise yesterday's win as the greatest win, but it's also one of the best results, given the fact that that's three out of four now. And I just think that what Andrew Webster said about determination, about grit and about resilience is exactly right. That's what he's brought. Spot on. And that's what it was yesterday. I mean, the highlight will be Sean Johnson's try, rolling back the clock and stepping the defence and scoring under the under the posts like it's 10 years ago. But overall, it was built on, like you said, resilience, grit, pride in the jersey. There was, I can't remember how many sets in the last sort of five minutes where there was a penalty and a repeat set and whatever on our own line and they held them out. Um, and even not to not to sort of go into their shells uh, after the no try and, and Josh Adokar running 100 metres to score. Um, and I was pretty filthy about that for about 20 minutes, but they kept at it. And yeah, just, just defence, grit, resilience, uh, something we haven't seen in the side in a couple of years now. And and let's and let's make this clear because it need you know the point has to be made. It was only a matter of last season, and it was the end of last season, and just those awful press conferences where Stacey Jones, the great Stacey Jones, would be sitting there with such a miserable, disappointed look on his face, saying that the players had given up and they'd no pride in the jersey and that they wouldn't commit and they wouldn't defend and they wouldn't tackle. And a lot of these players are the same players. So something has changed. Somebody has come along and changed something. And that name is Andrew Webster, isn't it? Yeah, I, I agree. Um, and, and it goes back further to, I remember the, the Nathan Brown um, press conferences where it was, you know, oh, they're, they're trying hard every week and they're, they're putting in a training and that's not what we did at training. It. And it just, uh, yeah, and, and, and along with that, there were guys being allowed to leave. Like we've spoken about that quite a bit over the past month or two, guys, you know, being released from contracts and things like this. And it just, Felt a bit empty. There was, you know, you got, you're watching guys walk out to go to other clubs or other, other codes, and you're sitting there thinking, well, what's 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 the point? What's going on? But now it's, you know, Webster's come in and he's he's automatically said, no, we want to be contending. It's not good enough just to make up the numbers. It's not good enough just to put in a good performance, even if we lose. We want to be winning games. And um, yeah, from from top to bottom, um, every player. Uh, you know, in that squad yesterday, and going all the way down to reserve grade as well, is uh, it just feels like they're, there's they walk around with their chests out a little bit more. There's a bit of pride. The shoulders are up. Um, and it's it's just it's good to see. It's really good to see. And going into Cronulla next week must be full of confidence. Three and one. All right. Well, the the round kicked off with the Eels winning against the Panthers last Thursday night, and that was such a vital win because at zero and four you're going absolutely nowhere. So should the Panthers be worried though? That's two losses. They're only by a single point both losses, but that's two losses out of three games. Yeah, I mean, we yeah we haven't seen it was when the, when the Panthers lost the the. World Club Series, whatever they want to call it, and then into the Broncos. It was the first time they'd lost back-to-back in about two years, something crazy like this, maybe even longer. Now they've lost two two games already, and yeah, they've been close games against good teams. The, the Eels are still a good team, even though they've only got one win on the board. Um, but yeah, it, it's I, I suppose it's a reflection of a couple of those guys that have lost, and maybe I think the rest of the competition is catching up a little bit to the Panthers. Um, I don't think they'll be they'll be too too worried. It was um, a golden point loss. It was uh, an incredible game. I mean that 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 uh, two point field goal Nathan Cleary slotted in the last five seconds just incredible. He's a he's a freak. But um, but I don't think they'll be too they'll be too worried. Um, I think it's more a matter of the the competition catching up rather than the Panthers sort of dipping off too much. And yeah, like you say, the Eels needed that win. Um, they've been close. Uh, in their first three losses, but uh, that that went a bit, especially against the Panthers, and not just the table, you know, not just the two-time champion Panthers, but the West rivalry. Um, they'll be they'll be full of confidence heading into the the, uh, the the next sort of portion of the season as well. Brendan Bradford, Coach Sports AU with us, and the Broncos four out of four. Let's look at them then. I mean, that's the perfect way to start a season. And not to tell anyone else, they're the only unbeaten team. Uh, heck of a local derby, low scoring, tense and tight affair it was. Uh, but you know, again, you know, the results are everything in this business. Wins are everything. Four out of four. I mean, this is a team that re- re- collapsed terribly at the end of last year. What are you seeing different in them? Kind of similar to the to the Warriors, actually. They, there's a bit of belief there. There's a bit of there's a bit of starch in them this year. And uh, that game on Friday, it, it felt like 
state of origin. It was a sold out Suncorp Stadium. Um, you know, although the Dolphins are only a month into their NRL sort of career, I suppose that the the Redcliffe history that the, there is a lot of history between the Broncos and Redcliffe and the local sort of rivalry. Um, and it, yeah, like you say, it was, a, it was a close, tense affair, and it looked like the Dolphins were coming back. It wasn't a super high quality game, and I don't think the Broncos have been playing really good footy yet. But they've been able to grind out wins. They've been able to to just do enough. To, to get four wins on the board, and I think if you if you look at it overall, you'd you'd rather be playing not at a hundred percent with four wins than be absolutely flying with four wins because you've still got improvement. Um, and yeah, it's it's like say it's the the Broncos going well is it, good for the game. It's good for footy. It's good for the NRL overall. And uh, yeah, looking forward to seeing what else they can produce this year. I'm going to read your list of teams and ask you what they have in common: the Sharks, the Rabbits, the Storm. The Bulldogs, the Titans, the Knights, the Cowboys. What do all of those teams have in common? What have they got in common? Two two wins? Yeah, two losses. That's right. Two, yeah. two wins, two losses. Yeah, I mean, and you're looking at Rabbitoh Storm, you'd be thinking that they're top of the table and, and Titans, Knights, you'd be thinking they're down the bottom. That's right. But uh, it's, it's, it's honestly, it's one of the, it feels like the most even competition we've had in, in years. Um you know, with the Dolphins winning, with the the Warriors winning, um, with the even with the Bulldogs sort of coming back, it it, it feels just like a, a much more open um, NRL competition this this season. Um, and and I think last last weekend weekend just gone this might have been the best. I mean, we had two Golden Point games, the Warriors in a tight one, the Derby. Um, it was just bloody good. It was just really good, enjoyable, exciting football to watch. Yeah, I totally. I tend to agree with you. Look, I mean, you know, I, I looked at a lot of these games and I got some of them right. I got some of them wrong. I mean, you know, the Cowboys came back. They beat the Titans. But, I would, you know, who would have been surprised the way the Titans have been playing? I mean, West Tigers seem to have been cut adrift. Uh, you know, the Dragons yeah. looked great last week. The Sharks pumped them with 40 points. And so they're going to have to be a worry for the Warriors. But let's look at the West Tigers 0-4. It's impossible almost statistically to come back from that and make the finals. Are they the cutoff team this year, the one that just drifts off? Yeah, they are. I, I think... Um... Uh, you know, I've already sort of, I've already put them in the in the also rounds basket. It's you know, it's, it's tough. It's only four rounds in, but you look at their next month or so. They've got the Broncos, the Eels, a bye, Manly Panthers. Oh, it's tough to see where they get a win in the next five weeks. They'll get two points in a bye. That might be it. Um, and they're, they're and and they're just not really showing anything. At least with, at least with the Bulldogs. At least with the Titans. They're showing something. Either they're not winning every game, and they're not even, you know, performing really well. But there's the basis there. You can see what they're trying to do. I can't really even see what the West Tigers are trying to do. They've already made a change to the halves with Brandon Waking coming in and, and Dewey going to fullback. Um, it's just it just seems like yeah, there's there's not much of a plan, or you know, Plan A didn't didn't work. Um, and yeah, it's it's tough on on the Tigers. They're long suffering fans, but I think this is honestly this is another season to to strike off. And uh, I don't know. Look look forward to Benji Marshall coming in as head coach. I suppose. Brendan, you always you know one of the things we always look for when we're in New Zealand is we look at those NRL 360 programs. We listen to the commentators as well, and always just seeing you know what their reaction is to the Warriors. Fulsome in the praise, like Matty Johns. I mean, you know that was the opening item in his show. Brandy Alexander talking about it. So is this is 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 it is it a theme on your side that a lot of the commentators, a lot of the uh, scribes are actually talking up the Warriors at the moment? Yeah, and I think a big part of that is yeah, you know, like I notice it as well, especially in you read the paper and most weekends there's you know a little small sidebar of of the Warriors results and and, and but if they're not playing a Sydney team, they might not even get much more than a, a notice and you know like a, a paragraph and another article, but. Uh, it's you know wins means relevance. So if you're winning games and you're at the top of the table, people are going to talk about you. Especially when you know a lot a lot of pundits are having them 16. Even uh, quite a few people had them for the spoon this year. So I think there's the the surprise factor around the Warriors and and just around yeah around winning. When you're winning, when you're top of the table, um, people are going to notice. People are going to talk about you because. That's what people want to hear about. And we've got to wrap it up with probably the biggest story over the weekend. Well, it wasn't about a game, but it's actually about a single player, and it's Joseph uh, Suali'i. Uh, rugby, obviously, in Australia, still have something to sell because this is the biggest coup 
for Australian rugby. I think since what I mean, Falau came from AFL, but I'm thinking since the since the Takiri, since the Sailor, since the Rogers days, where they've actually poached a guy who's playing league. Yeah, I mean it's it's good for him. Like he's, if he can make the money, if if he can, um, you know, if people want to pay him this and, and have him to come over, more power to him. Um, that's awesome, awesome for him. It's not. It's not the solution for, for Rugby Australia. It's not the solution for the Wallabies or for the Waratahs, who he's going to play for. Um, and to be honest, uh, I, I've been hearing just former Wallabies, former footy rugby players, people, in, in, you know, long-time rugby guys, not real happy about this one because everyone sort of thinks he, he's going to come over, he's going to play the British and Irish Lions Tour in 25 and the World Cup in 2027, if he's good enough. Um but most people think he'll be back in rugby league within sort of five or six years. Um, and and you know, I've spoken to, to former Wallabies about sort of the, you know, the, the amount they paid Israel Folau could have paid for a, a grassroots team in Western Sydney, uh, things like this. And it's, 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 it's very top down. It's top heavy. It's, it's going to create lots of headlines, which it has and lots of publicity, which it has. But in the long term, you might get a couple of years out of him, but I don't think he's going to, uh, grow the game at the grassroots where where it needs attention. There's not going to be. I don't think you're going to have you know more players trying to take up rugby because you know a 1.6 million dollar winger is joining the Wallabies. With uh, Brandon Smith said he's not going to help them beat the All Blacks. Um, it just it seems again very short sighted. It's it's good for him, but rugby in the long term. I don't think it's I don't think it's good for the rugby in the long term. If I'm being quite honest.